Hello, it's Ren Presents Time. I'm your host, Ren, and today we continue with the Hazards of the Old Ones, Part 2, Chapter 3, Lady Poe of Blanchford. And last week, we saw Lieutenant Kylos, the stalwart first officer of our hero, Captain Davidge, tearfully resigning her post, her husband, who had been pressurizing her off and on through the years to come home, you know, come home, let's start our family, as he is a grounded professor at the University of Tusk on the planet Onaris, where Kai comes from, while Lieutenant Kylos is loving life, sailing the stars at Captain Davidge's side. She loves to fly and loves adventure and the unknown and the mystery of being a first officer and she loves wearing a uniform having a rank has her impoverished origins her status as a peasant is a painful thing for her and having a rank having a uniform makes her feel important I remember when I was in the military, when I wore my uniform out in the public, it, it made me feel important. But lately, her husband has becoming more forceful in his pressurizations of Lieutenant Kylos and demand. He demanded that she come home or he was just going to leave her in their marriage. And Kai has been a faithful, dutiful, long distance wife over these past 10 plus years that she's been Captain Davidge's first. She loves her husband, doesn't want to lose him, and his skills have helped out a lot in the past. He can pretty much find the answer to pretty much any question you have. Just He just needs a little time and he can make things happen for you. His name is unknown. His name has never been revealed. It's all, He's always just the professor. Or sometimes he's known as Professor A to Z or A to Z, as my Canadian artists would often say. What what the hell is Z? Who is Z? It's Z. Z. Professor A to Z. His name is unknown. Why? I've never given him a name. I don't know. These things just sometimes take a life of their own. And I think I know what it is, but I'm, I'm not at liberty to say right now. This week, we continue on Chapter 3. Lady Poe of Blanchford. And we've met Poe earlier in the book. She is the older sister of Captain Davidge. Very typical Blanchford. Very tall, very up and down. Uh, she has platinum blonde hair, which is a valid vith color. Usually the vith are associated with blue, like blue hair, like Captain Davidge has. But platinum blonde is an acceptable color, and she has little streaks of blue in it here and there. And she is a good friend of Sigillus, Sig, his wife, and they become good friends. And Sig was Lady Poe's tutor, because Poe also is a shadow tech female, although she had been hidden from the black cats. Usually the black cats through eugenics, through various sciences and chartings know when a female is going to be born as a shadow tech female and they abduct these poor females and send them to the shade church to be trained. That didn't happen with Lady Poe, her father Sadrick, who was a man about town, not much of a warrior defended her from the black hats who came to kidnap her and he killed them very unusual for Cedric, but this is his daughter we're talking about and she grew up like any other lady of standing would grow up in a vith castle but she had lots of problems she was oftentimes insensate bedridden writhing in pain people didn't know what to make of Lady Poe and in the league where the inhabitants the leaguers have been gifted with health and youth they don't get sick and they don't get old either those are gifts the elders of old gave to them and it's not very fashionable to be sick to be addled with an infirmity because it's not very common and for lady poe to behave like she was damaged like somehow in her mind brain damaged was a bad mark was a slight 
on the House of Blanchford. And she was basically a social outcast. Lady Poe is very old. She is well over 200 years old. And people in the League tend to live anywhere from 200 to 220 years. And the thing about being young so lady poe's well over 200 years old but she doesn't look a day over 25 just to look at her very typical of the league the problem with this arrangement is she's not immortal these people die but you never really know when you're gonna die because you're young and you're healthy and then, then one day you just you're dead there's really no rhyme or reason to it it's something these the people of the league accept it's just Part of life. They have a ritual when they get over a certain age called the time of goodbyes where they basically go out to all their friends and family and say goodbye just in case they the next moment might be their last. They go out and they reminisce about their life and tell their friends how they what they meant to them and their family how they love them and so on and so forth just in case that they don't wake up the next day. And Lady Poe is already past her time of goodbye. She's already done her ceremony. She's already said goodbye to the people she loves and her friends. But she hasn't died yet. She's continuing on. When Sig discovered that the problem Lady Poe was having was too much shadow tech inside her body, which is fatal to the shadow tech female. If they don't get rid of their shadow tech, it can kill them. And her dollying about in a daze was just a symptom of too much shadow tech. And eventually it would just come out of her mouth like a fog. And the Castle Blanchard was known for these sudden gray mists that would just envelop the castle, come down the, the mountain shelf, and linger in the village all day long. And people didn't, like, what is this fog? Where is this coming from? It feels kind of weird, like kind of crawly. It doesn't feel like a normal fog. And that is excess shadow tech coming out of Lady Poe's mouth, essentially. Sig discovered that she was wearing a cover on her face to hide her huge shadow mark. And then Sig taught her how to use her shadow tech, how to safely be rid of it so that it wouldn't cause her to have these problems, these dazes, these pains, these fogs. Lady Poe was a quick study and she quickly became very skilled at creating shadow tech animals and as she grew more and more competent her shadow tech turned to silver tech like just like Sig's did and she had a, a fondness for creating little creatures that would wander the grove and eventually she created Kara Hill in a fountain. Our friend who is stumping around the, the pages of this book and we will see more of Kara Hill later but she is his mother and Kara Hill was made so well that he became a god. He became a member of the Celestial Arboreum. So that is, or Lady Poe is his mother, the mother of a god. So what does that make Lady Poe? Hard, hard to say at, at this point. But let's uh, see what she's doing, what she's all about. Chapter 3, Lady Poe of Blanchford. Let's begin. This is a short one. This is only about four pages, so it shouldn't take long. Let's begin right now. Can you see it, Lady Poe? A solemn union between Houses Merriweather and Blanchford. It could be a match that shall have the whole of the League talking. Lady Poe and Lord Haverell of Merriweather stood on the roof of his sprawling ancestral home in the seaside city of Burn. It was a vith structure, but not a castle like Castle Blanchford. Instead, it was an estate spread out on lovely manicured lawns of only the most perfect green. From here, the skyline of Burn rose in the distance, green flagged, the seat of league money and finances. The Merryweathers were noted bankers and owned several influential banks in Burn. Certainly it was a pretty place, an exquisite place. It was a beautiful day, but Poe, coming from the cold north, 
felt it a bit hotter than she liked. From the patina-capped green roof, Poe saw the Merryweather ladies strolling about the grounds, their brightly colored pastel gowns making them look like tulips in the bright afternoon sun. They had spent the day touring Burn, visiting the banks, the vast marketplaces of bustling commerce and the ancient buildings therein. It was all beautiful and interesting, surely. Poe had seen so much of the same in recent weeks, as the various League lords vied for her attention. She found she was getting a bit bored with it all, actually. The trips, the villas, one beautiful sight blending into another, one handsome League lord after the next. Perhaps she might take a break, catch her breath, and take a moment to reflect. Strange how most of her life she'd been social poison. No self-respecting lord worth his shirt daring come near her and court the crazy woman from the north as Poe had been thought to be. Now she was no longer crazy. Now she was a shadow tech female. Now she was almost a black hat. Poe had heard that Dav's turning of Sig and Bethriel of Moan and Commander Mapes saving of suzerain of gaul had ushered in a new craze called black hat fighting various foolhardy lords of the league were actively setting out hoping to encounter a black hat capture her and turn her as dav had done with sig she had heard that of all people the duke of olin from the region of Esther had fought a black hat painter on Xandar and had her in chains in his dungeon. He was trying to turn her, only he was having great trouble getting her to quiet and cooperate. She had also heard that Lord Finster of Rustum had tried something similar and had been horribly killed in the process. The parts of his body were sundered and fed to a pack of wild attack birds. It was a grim warning that black hats were not to be tried with. Lady Poe, a shadow tech female and civilized northern lady, was a much safer, much more docile choice, and that made her a valuable commodity. Lords from everywhere sought her attention. They lined up to spend a bit of her time to make their respective pitch to have not only a lady of Blanchford at their side, but an almost black hat as well. She had been delighted with the attention. She'd been swept off her feet, certainly. She'd always dreamed of a gentleman, any gentleman, coming to take her away. For 200 years, that's what she longed for in between bouts of agony and shadow tech poisoning. Funny, now that she was getting her lifelong wish, she found herself remarkably indifferent with the whole process. The gentlemen were all handsome and proper, they lived in grand castles and estates, and they all said the right things, but she just didn't feel much of anything towards them in return. She wanted something like what Dav and Sig had, a full, devoted body and soul love. She watched Sig as she gazed at Dav, seeing the love pour out of her. And that's what she wanted. That's what she wanted to give. And she knew she had it in her somewhere. All she needed was the right man to set her soul ablaze. But so far, none had done it. She remained as cold as her northern home. She had tried to love Milo Soprobert, that wonderful witty man. Dav and Sig were always pushing her to court him. They were afraid that she didn't because of his plain, dumpy appearance. Such wasn't the case. She didn't care what he looked like. She just didn't love him, that's all. She had tried. Desperately she tried. She cherished him as a friend, as a brother for both his sharp mind and the tenderness he'd shown her the years she'd been sick. She hated herself for not being able to love him. She felt ungrateful and low, but it just wasn't there. She wondered if she'd ever love anybody. As she pondered these thoughts on Lord Merriweather's patina-covered roof, she barely noticed the odd black vessel that came down through the clouds and landed on the green, winged, pinnacled, somewhat on the smallish side, black as charcoal. It wasn't any sort of ship she had ever seen before. The house staff approached the ship. Merriweather ladies, those colorful tulips, cautiously walked toward it to get a better look. Are you expecting visitors, Lord Haverhill? 
Oh, vessels are always coming and going. My brother, Lord Kesvin, is always picking up odd starcraft from exotic locales. It's a hobby of his. An expensive one, too. The taxes are truly astounding. He looked at the black ship. Ah, that's a novel one down there, isn't it? Poe didn't like the look of it. And it smelled on the wind. It smelled plain as day. Shadow tech. She'd know it anywhere. Call your guards, Avril. It's Shadow Tech, she said. Lord Merriweather pulled a small communicator out of his coat and began speaking into it. As Poe watched, the black ship pulsed. A wave of black and filmy, slimy spears came out of it and, expanding, enveloped the green and the house grounds. Where the wave passed, the grass turned brown, the stone cracked, and birds fell lifeless out of the trees. And ladies in their colorful gowns wilted to the ground, scattered about like fallen flowers. The wave passed Poe and Lord Merriweather. Instantly, she felt dazed, stunned, the silver tech within her reacting badly to its passing. Merriweather dropped his communicator and slumped to the rooftop. Poe felt sick to her stomach, her insides blanching. The roof spun. She collapsed to the flagstones, her limbs growing heavy. Haveral? She cried weakly. She couldn't move. Her limbs were so heavy. With supreme effort, she lifted a finger and sent a thin stream of silver tech toward him. It contacted his hand and wrapped around it. No heartbeat. No breath. No life. Haveril, Lord of Merriweather, was dead. Time passed. All was deathly quiet. Poe, unable to move, lay there in the sun. Dimly, she saw a door at the end of the run open. A small figure stood there. The figure looked at her a few moments, then began walking casually toward her. It was a girl, a blue-haired girl wearing a black jacket. Poe could hear the soles of her boots treading on the flagstones. She could see a large energy gun swinging holstered at her side. Lady Poe, the girl said nearing her. You are a surprisingly difficult person to track down. Here one day, across the planet the next. Must be nice having so many gentlemen lining up to see you. My associates also wish to see you. They wish it very much and are greatly looking forward to meeting you. They insist, in fact. With a smile, she continued nearer. Poe was certain she didn't want anything to do with these associates of hers. As the girl approached, Poe struck. She roped her around the neck with silver tech and lifted her off the ground. A fast series of wind blasts came from the girl. She was trying to waft out of the noose. Poe had her in, but couldn't. Poe silver tech bound her in place. She then threw her, arms and legs flailing, over the side of the roof where it was a good 200 feet to the ground below. She threw her like she was casting a fishing line from a rod. She could dimly hear the surprise gurgling sounds the girl made as she fell with Poe's silver tech cord around her throat. Still, suffering the effects from the shadow tech blast, Poe felt dizzy. Her silver tech lost its cohesion and faded into a silvery mist. Poe got sick. There was a blast of cold air. The blue-haired girl emerged from the cloud. Her mazen gun was drawn. She was enraged, and she fell on the near-helpless Poe. Blanchford bitch, she muttered, and she reared back and pistol-whipped Poe mercilessly about the shoulders and face. Over and over again, the cruel butt of the gun making a sickening smack with every raw hit. Soon, her gun butt covered with blood, she holstered it and easily picked Poe up. She was oddly strong for such a small, skinny girl. Must have the gift of strength. Poe hung there, an unwilling, unable passenger. Through swelling eyelids, she saw the pebbled surface, the fine patina covering the roof, and the back-and-forth movement of the girl's legs and booted feet. With all the strength she had left, she slowly moved her hand up to her throat to the silver medallion that hung there. With shaking fingers, she flipped it over and frantically touched the embossed image, the whiskered, bright-eyed, happy image of a seal. Carahill, she said. Help me! Shut up, the girl said. Carahill! And Lady Poa Blanchford fell into darkness. And with that, we conclude... Part 2, Chapter 3, Lady Poe of Blanchford. So we see 
Lady Poe on an outing with Lord Haverhill of Merriweather is attacked and abducted by Princess Vrock of Xandar. We knew Princess Vrock was gunning for Lady Poe as the Black Hat specifically tasked her to get Lady Poe because they felt that she belongs to them and that her silver tech within belongs to them. And we see Princess Vrock mercilessly carrying out that task, killing essentially Lord Haverhill and many of his family members who were roaming about the grounds when she attacked. I'm not sure how many people here got killed, but quite a few. And reading that just a moment ago, I'd forgotten about that. It's been over 10 years since I've written this, and I I forgot that Princess Rock just murdered a a bunch of people. Lady Poe did a good job of defending herself. She just about threw Rock off the roof of the of the building to her death but couldn't quite hold her silver tech and then princess rock has the gift of waft and when i talk about wind you know blasts of wind that's a byproduct of the waft these people have the gift of waft those select people who have it captain davidge has it sig has it and it's accompanied by wind it's like like a a blast of wind and you, you can basically teleport short or medium distances with the gift of waft that's what it is it's usually accompanied by a a blast of wind so that's what that those wind references refer to so rock falls on lady poe and starts beating her mercilessly with her with the butt of her gun not a pleasant thing to happen to lady poe obviously so next week we will continue on part two chapter four the cavern and the cavern is one of my most favorite chapters i really like how it turned out and the cavern almost ended my writing career i will discuss that next week or why that happened it didn't happen of course because i went on to finish this book and about 10 more after that but we will see what happened with the cavern that almost made me reconsider the whole process of writing so we shall see until then this is ren presents i am your host ren peace out